Given its political and military significance, Edinburgh's had numerous defensive walls encircling the city and protecting the citizens over the years. The first boundary wall is thought to have been built around 1125, after King David granted the city royal borough status, meaning it could hold market. As a result, a protective wooden palisade was likely constructed to encircle the parts of the then borough that weren't already protected by the Norlock to the north or Castle Rock to the west. After that, we had the King's Wall, built in the early 15th century, and in 1514, the famous Flodden Wall construction began. In 1513, King James IV led a failed attempted invasion of England, culminating in the disastrous defeat at the Battle of Flodden. It was after this, and the fear of retaliation by the English king, King Henry VIII, that the decision was taken to strengthen the borough's defences and construct the Flodden Wall. Although the wall wasn't fully completed until 1560, it was an impressive sight with some parts of the wall up to 7.3 metres high and 1.2 metres thick. Dotted along the wall were six reinforced gates or ports, the most famous of these being the West Port and Cowgate. There is a less well-known port though, the Bristol Port, close to Greyfriars Kirk and Forest Road where this haunting occurred. Forest Road, as it now stands, was constructed in the late 19th century and was once home to Lady Adela Minken, who lived there around 1908 and, by all accounts, owned a large amount of property on the street. Lady Adela was aware of hushed rumours and stories of dark happenings occurring in one of her properties. Staff spoke of strange smells and odd shadows, particularly during the late summer or early autumn months each year. As open-minded as she was, she was also a rational thinker and felt this was something far more earthly, not deeming the origin was in any way supernatural. Merely a fancy, as she put it. With that being said, she did remain curious about the supposed haunting and growing impatient about having staff constantly around, sent them off for a drive in her motor car. Other than her two dogs, she was now alone in the property. Lady Adela decided to make the most of her solitude and took a tour of the house, deciding to visit some of the rooms she wouldn't normally, with one of the first being the housekeeper's room. When she entered, she was pleasantly surprised by its appearance, noting to herself that it was akin to other public rooms throughout the house. But while there, she noticed that both her dogs, both working boarhounds, would not enter the room, no matter how often she called them. This was her first sign that all was not well in Forest Road. After shrugging off the dog's apparent disobedience, she continued her tour and soon found herself in kitchen cellars armed only with a candle and again without the company of her normally faithful dogs. Ever curious, she descended the steps into the darkness where she noticed an inner cellar. This one was far less inviting and more claustrophobic than the larger cellar she currently stood in. Stealing herself, she held her candle out in front of her and cautiously walked into the smaller cellar. A few feet in, she noticed something unusual about the floor tiles. There was an area of flooring where the tiles were newer than those surrounding them. After a few minutes of closer examination, she noticed the atmosphere of the cellar had changed and a sweet, sickly smell now permeated the air. Covering her mouth with her handkerchief, she called on her dogs, but they didn't come. And it was then, for the first time, she felt afraid. A loud crash broke the silence. A crash loud enough to frighten her into dropping her candle. Now standing completely alone in the pitch black, she noticed something that would terrify her. At the top of the stairs, the expected gloominess had been illuminated by a faint, phosphorescent glow. The glow surrounded a form. From this distance, she couldn't discern if it was male or female. But she'd soon find out. After a few seconds, the glowing form started to descend the stairs towards her, never once lifting its head to look at her as it seemed to glide down the stairs. The figure approached the horror-stricken Lady Adele, passing within two feet of her and it was now that she could discern more features. Short, squat, with a tangled mass of dark hair, and wearing clothing that exposed her rake-like limbs. 
the figure continued its ungainly motion past Lady Adele and into the cellar she'd just come from. Here, the phantom stopped, right on top of the newly laid floor tiles. Watching with a curious horror, unable to take her eyes away from this horrible image, there was an almighty crash and the ceiling above the figure came down on top of it. This was too much for Lady Adele and she passed out from the fright. Some hours later, the servants returned and their joy at being allowed time away in their motor car was cut short when they found the scene in the cellar. Lady Adele eventually awoke and was helped to her chamber but never spoke of what happened to the servants. A few days after these events, while Lady Adele spent time recuperating, she decided to remain in Forest Road, something she'd soon come to regret as it wasn't the end of her haunting. One evening, after reading in her drawing room, she retired to her chambers and soon fell asleep, only to wake some time later with a violent start. Out of the darkness, a few inches from her face, was the face of another woman, a ghostly, emaciated woman with sunken, almost hollow eyes. As if that wasn't enough, the apparition's countenance soon changed. The eyes rolled back in its head, the jaw fell away, exposing a writhing tongue, before the whole apparition disappeared back into the darkness. And that was the end of the haunting at Forest Road. Soon after this, Lady Adele decided to look for possible answers to the haunting, and what she heard may go some way to explaining the horrific apparition she witnessed. Before the Grand Terrace properties of Forest Road were built, there was once a cottage on the land where two sisters had apparently lived. These sisters were said to have both been nurses, so had access to various concoctions. One sister is believed to have ultimately poisoned the other. After the sister's death, the surviving sister is said to have descended into madness and the cottage fell into a state of dilapidation, ultimately being destroyed one night in a violent storm and killing the remaining sister when the roof collapsed in on her. <laughs> 